Friday, April 14th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, Aniak Chak Volcano, the Alaskan Peninsula. We're talking the Aleutians. There is an eruption warning. Intense seismic activity and alert status raised to yellow. Now, what do we know about Aniak Chak Volcano on the Alaskan Peninsula? Well, Matt, Mount Aniak Chak, which is Russian in its naming, is a 3,700-year-old volcanic caldera, massive in size. It's approximately 10 kilometers or 6 miles in diameter. And it's located in the Aleutian Range of Alaska and the United States. Although it's a stratovolcano by composition, the pre-existing mountain collapsed in a major eruption forming this massive caldera. The area around the volcano is the Aniakchak National Monument and Preserve, which is maintained by the National Park Service. And it is a glorious area. In November of 1967, Aniakchak Caldera was designated as a national landmark by the National Park Service. You can see a small cinder cone inside of the caldera here, and we will get to some of the history in just a moment. But here you can see Aniak Chak National Monument and preserve the caldera and the position on the Aleutian chain. Now, Mount Aniak Chak was previously a glacially eroded stratovolcano of andesitic composition, looking similar to Mount St. Helens, let's say with a pre-caldera volume of 75 cubic kilometers, which is about 18 cubic miles. Andesitic material in the volcano included basalt and dacite. The mountain collapsed, forming the present-day caldera that you're looking at here. This was during a major eruption, which registered at Volcanic Explosive Index 6, or VEI 6, which left evidence in ice cores dated to 1645 B.C., which was later moved to 1641 B.C. in the Greenland Ice Core Chronology of 2005. Recently, scientists have suggested that ice core dates in the 17th century B.C. may be around 14 years too old, meaning that Anakachak, Aniakchak, actually erupted in 1628 or 1627 B.C. Since then, more than 20 eruptions have occurred from the vents on the caldera floor. Vent Mountain, which is the big cinder cone you're looking at here, has been the source of numerous eruptions of ash bombs and lava flows since the caldera formed. And this is from 1500 B.C. and A.D. 1000, Four lava domes were extruded on the caldera floor, which you could see here, 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 and probably there. Now, textural evidence shows that these lava dome eruptions occurred beneath ancient Surprise Lake, which was as deep as 100 meters, so they would have been phreomagmatic and quite spectacular. Now, ancient Surprise Lake drained catastrophically before A.D. 1000. Surprise Lake in Anakchak's crater lake is now just 2.75 kilometers squared or just 680 acres in area and up to 19.5 meters or 64 feet deep. So it's quite a shallow lake in this caldera, simply a large puddle, in fact. Now, before or immediately after the lake's draining, explosive eruptions of andesitic magma produced a cluster of three tough cones in the southeast part of the caldera, and we pointed those out just a moment ago, down in this region. Now, around 1500, during one of the most violent events in recent history at Aniak Chak, an estimated 0.75 to 1 cubic kilometers of material destroyed a pre-existing edifice at Half Cone and flooded most of the caldera floor with pyroclastic flows, surges, and fallout many meters thick. 
So this volcano is anything but dormant. Now, during the final phase of this eruption, a lava flow filled the entire basin formed during the collapse of Half Cone. Now, several more recent prehistoric eruptions occurred at the summit crater and along the south flank of Vent Mountain, producing a field of blocky day site. And it probably is this big mound here that we're looking at here. Minor eruptions immediately west and east of Vent Mountain produced a small scoria cone called Blocky Cone and two mar craters, now water-filled, along the base of the southeast caldera wall. European descendant geologists discovered the volcano back in 1922. The volcano's only eruption in modern recorded history occurred in 1931. The Jesuit glacial glacier priest, Father Bernard Hubbard, made a record of it. A small but impressive explosion pit was added to the pockmarked caldera floor that year. Many thousands of tons of ash lay strewn within the caldera and scattered up to 40 miles away over small villages after this VEI-4 eruption. Now, the caldera-forming eruption of 3,700 years ago had significant effect on the regional landscape and on the entire range of plant and animal life over a broad area. Indeed, the eruption has been implicated in widespread impacts on human populations across the whole of western Alaska. In the immediate vicinity of the volcano, the effects were so severe with the 3,700-year-ago eruption that people did not return to the region for another 2,000 years. That's just 1,700 years ago. Some scholars speculate that this eruption and the subsequent devastation may have segregated people to the north and south of the volcano for long enough to drive the divergence between the Aleutian and the Inuit Yupik Eskimo language. Fascinating. And there are occasional explosive events in modern times, but none equivalent to the VEI-4. So let's take a look at the eruptive history of Anakchak and the massive caldera. Now, they're claiming that this caldera was formed 3,700 years ago during this VEI-6, but there was another VEI-6 8,300 years ago or 6300 BC that was confirmed at VEI-6 and maybe even greater. And I think that this volcano is one of the volcanoes that is responsible for some of the major climatic shifts on Earth. Yes, Aniak Chak. Let's take a look at the GISP-2 Greenland ice course because remember, Aniak Chak is real close to this latitude up in the Northern Hemisphere. So if we start with the 6300 BC VEI-6, that's 8,300 years ago. And if we go back 8,300 years, you can see right here, 8,300 years ago, that there was a major drop in temperature during the eruption of Aniakchak to the tune of almost 3 degrees centigrade. So that is quite significant. And then the volcano erupted again, the caldera forming eruption, which would be 1645 BC or 3,645 years ago, which would be right here. And you could see another precipitous drop from the Aniak Chak eruption, this time just one degree C. So there may have been other accumulative effects here other than Aniak Chak to drop the temperature so low. But 3,600 years ago, in fact, Aniak Chak dropped the temperature on Earth once again. And why do we care? Well, because there is a new eruption warning. Intense seismic activity and the alert status is now raised to yellow. The Alaska Volcano Observatory announced that the increased rate of seismic activity at the volcano has been registered in mid-February, following the ongoing earthquake swarm from October 2022. Ever since, 
Quakes have become more intense and shallower at less than 5.6 miles in depth. Later on in mid-February, earthquakes continued to pick up in numbers per day, including a maximum magnitude M3.3 on the 17th of February. Transmissions of seismic records were disturbed due to a network outage in early March, causing inability to detect small earthquakes. However, the seismic activity remains above background levels, and the evolving activity was found in the strongest quake with a magnitude 3.3 on the 6th of April. That is just eight days ago, folks, and the uplift is intense. Not near the vent crater here, but in the center of the caldera. There is a 3.9 centimeter per week uplift showing through the, mo the month of March. This is magma being in place, and you can see the massive uptick in earthquakes per week as the magma is being in place beneath the caldera. Here is the seismic swarm, which is showing you the route in for the magma, and then the major emplacement here by the big quake centers. So we do have a major uplift in a circular region that would be a magma chamber. It is directly beneath the original caldera. Seismicity has increased exponentially in a pulse. So you can see here every 30 days there's a pulse. Pulse, and so we should get another pulse happening through mid-April, which is bad news because it means Aniakchak. Well, could go boom once again. And that could affect the climate here on Earth as we descend into the next Eddy Grand Solar Minimum. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. We are shadow banned across the YouTubes. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.